I forgot to turn. We go. Yes, yes, we are live. Woohoo! Let's see, got sound? Let's see, got sound? Yeah. Let's see, got sound? We have echo. Woohoo! All right. Share this around. Ah. Uh. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going on Discord here. Okay, I'm in the right spot. Alrighty, so paste there. my own hope over to Twitter and get out of Discord. And hop over to Facebook. The usual stuff. That's just the usual stuff. And um, yeah, so I am doing this on my iPad, so I can't, you know, it's trying to share back and forth with everything doesn't quite work too easily. One more thing to do. Do do do. Gotta get all the music posted. Okay. And edit. Yeah, it'd be so much easier if I could just do this and have it all set up, but no. And um, I had a live stream earlier today. Uh, it turned out that YouTube's new arts, new, uh, studio thing, uh, crashed and I didn't know it. So I went through about two hours or so of playing Minecraft and, um, went to save the stream and the stream never showed up. It's gone. Completely gone. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was pretty upset. It's like, yeah, this um thank you YouTube for your mess up. It was just absolutely wonderful. Squeaky chair. <laughs> okay. So, um let's get some music on. There's iTunes. <laughs> oh, sure, my computer's froze. It just doesn't end. It does not end. So plans today I have, if you see in the thumbnail, I have a little painting that I plan on doing of a friend's dog. And, um, Just have to get that painting done. So that is the plan. All of the music, of course, is YouTube's free music. So hopefully not dealing with that. 
issue. Uh, so yeah, I had a good life in the woods stream earlier and I couldn't figure out why I had no audience at all. And, you know, I just kept playing and made myself feel better and um, then went to save it and it had upcoming event. And it actually set the upcoming event for when I had actually ended the stream and didn't post it. There was nothing to process. And it had been streaming the whole time. I checked it. So I don't know what happened. Um, so I'll be redoing Life in the Woods number 14. There's already been some changes made to the landscape. But yeah, that was this morning. And uh, just uh, got to do some more packing in the art room. Looks like I'm probably going to have to find another place to live. So... Um, plans before are changing and it is what it is so art room is going to get seriously packed up but yeah life has been life and you know what do you do so instead we are going to have a happy moment just like every every single live stream for painting Bob Ross, positive energy. When you need positive energy, get Bob Ross. <laughs> My last can, not opened, not going to be opened. Yes. So we have to have our Bob Ross plug there. <laughs> it's not an art stream without Bob. So um, actually I should get the picture of the poodle up maybe. That would be important. Uh, she's a little black poodle. She's old, so she's got a lot of gray in her muzzle and, you know, kind of gray tips here and there and stuff. But she's really cute. Her name is Lucy. And I've played a lot with this dog. <laughs> I've known her for a few years, actually. So I'm trying to figure out. I had to go by several different pictures of her, which is what I do. I look at a lot of different photos and um, I was laying on the floor for some of them to show what our little girl is going to look like here. So there she is. And so that's what I'm going to attempt today. Let me actually get the screensaver off of the phone. She's a very friendly dog. She's not like, you know, how sometimes you get some poodles that are just the bitiest little nasty things. Lucy's not like that. She's she's so used to people being around all the time because used, um, used to bring uh, dogs to the uh, office at the home care company and stuff like that. So they had doggy days, so there'd be several dogs there. <laughs> So anyway, um, I suppose we could get on with this. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to find a good position for the iPad. So bear with me. Boy, I estimated that pretty good, actually. Yeah, my tabletop easel that hubby bought for me a while back. So this is where we're going to be today. And when I had the stomach flu, um, I was starting to drink pop again. So I have Diet Mountain Dew in my Renaissance Festival mug from 1990. Actually, just dishwasher safe. Going through the last of my pop again. I'm going to try again, and I'm sure I'm going to have migraines to beat all. Um, I have Diet 7-Up left over, too, so it's just trying to drink the last of it and then get off of it again and be back on just tea. All right, so I got to figure out what colors I need. I only need a few, a little bit of red, white 
black, of course, which is black goggy. Um, she does have some um, tiger eye beads or amber around her neck. I think she's got one of those amber baby necklaces with her collar. And her collar does seem to have some light blues in it too. Little yellow tones and brown tones to the gray in her coat. So yeah, I just have to add a little bit of lighter blues to, to my uh, paints here. That kind of blue will work. And let's use that paint instead of opening up a new one. I think I have enough browns to work with. I delivered the bottles. The glass bottles were a big hit. Um, so I got paid for those and they all, they fired really nice in the oven. Took about seven hours for them to cool down so I could take them out of the oven. And they still were just slightly warm to the touch, but all of them made it. It was absolutely no cracking, nothing. So it was a success. So very happy with that. Hubby's swearing in the background. So that's the brush I plan on using. What's going on? Oh, is Chell there to clean the floor for you? Oh, okay. Chell loves cheese. Well, hubby just dropped the bag of cheese, but it stayed closed. <laughs> That's why I asked about Chell. Yeah, her collar's got a little bit of the, kind of the Georgia clay brick color in it. And yeah, I don't need that color for amber. I have way too many reds sitting here. I'm going to clean some of those off the desk. I don't need green. Yeah, I was planned ahead of here. Good job. But I'm going to need a different tone of yellow, I think. That's an orange. Huh. Did I have a, I didn't have a brick type or a yellow that is uh, a more earth toned yellow. I have a brighter yellow. That's not going to help. At least if I move into a temporary place, I have all my paints in a bag and I can throw small canvases in here and still do this. I don't have an earth toned yellow in there. Really? Boy, I was prepared. If <laughs> not, that's bright yellow. I think I use a lot of bright yellow. Um, oh, cadmium, that'll work. Okay. I might not be able to get this one to open. Pliers! Oh, I got it open. Wonderful. All right. So we're going to do first, I think... Uh, I think we're going to do some of the black layer first and just work with the black. Now, because I'm using craft paints on this and not using professional artist colors, I will be glazing this after all is said and done. Um, and that will preserve the paint. 
sometimes these you know don't weather very well but they will with um a uh, layer over top okay let me get the other light on there we go i'm gonna move that one out of the way a little bit there hey i have a spot look at that all right so yeah the picture i'm going off of you can see is not anywhere near the same i actually had about 20 different photos of this dog so that's that's what i'm going off of let's get a little brown out too for her eyes heritage brick that'll be pretty good sorry about the slight wobbling I've got the iPad right in front of me I'm actually working around the iPad I do like to start with the eyes because I think it just helps me get the personality in. I kind of want to be ready to add the light. I'm going to blend this back in. Where's my paint towel? Oh, really, feather? Right there. I want it to look like there might be an image in her eye. way too much white on there so I gotta fix that <laughs> we're not making a blind dog she can see just fine oh and Shani's live of course so everybody's gonna go watch her actually did a painting of her that I'm going to give to her mom because at some point we're going to meet but um or a portrait just a pencil portrait and I wanted to capture what I see in her a lot you know what she needs to see in herself and she doesn't and I shared it with her boyfriend and um shared it on Facebook and he blocked me <laughs> like okay well I guess <laughs> you know not a wasted effort though it made me feel better because the whole situation just had me so incredibly depressed 
that just make turning some into something positive just made me feel a whole lot better. And it was so it was worth it. It wasn't a wasted effort and I already told Betty that I'm giving it to her. So you know, and my my ulterior motive was just to make something positive out of the whole thing. There are times the girl realizes what's go, you know, that something's going wrong with her. Something's not right with her life. And sometimes she has these moments where she's recognizing the issues that she's causing. And yeah, people are hard on her and unnecessarily hard on her. And Because, you know, it's drama is a thing on YouTube. But there's a lot of times that she needs to realize that she's causing her own issues, too. And people will do what they do and react to it. It is a thing. just manipulating the paint to give the look I want. Going almost with a dry brush in some respects. There we go. All right. Now, she does have a little bit of white showing, and that's kind of a poodle thing. So we're going to go that route. Actually, on that side, I don't think we need to. It's got to be on this side. here. Okay. Yeah. That looks pretty decent. Okay. And yeah, she's got an awful lot of gray in her coat. I got some likes on my on my video. I don't have anybody to talk to tonight. Uh, oh well. Now well, let's look at another picture of Miss Lucy. Okay, because she still has black on the very top of her nose. So we're just gonna lay in the black here. could probably do this with a bigger brush, but... Mudbrooker! Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm out of work again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of like, well, maybe this is an opportunity to just 
make a change. I guess it's going to be hard to do set opportunity with no income at all. And yeah, but somehow. Just going to have to make it happen. So I figured I'd at least get this painting done. Get this to the lady that owns Lucy here. And then uh, then get to packing things up because it's been pretty bad financially for the last few months anyway. And then now this is like, yay. And that was as of yesterday. So it's like, oh, wonderful. I got the glass bottles delivered yesterday and was able to get groceries with that money, so that helped. And um, they were really, really happy with the bottles, so. This is just a base, base idea for the black here. This is not... Not anywhere near finished. These paintings that tend to look pretty awful until you get all the groundwork in. Um, I don't know. That's the only problem. If you look at my hand right now. Um, I'm afraid of what I my hands will look like um, within, you know, within one day. Uh, my skin go, peels down to the meat. I have eczema so bad that hand sanitizers are murder. And, I mean, I worked for Fresenius Dialysis for, you know, quite a few years. But um, I started contracting MRSA despite all the PPE and everything else and I'd been hospitalized a couple times for it and pneumonia on top of it and so I as much as I miss working dialysis I loved it whoops um I don't think that's going to be an option plus having to lift all the things of bicarbonate and everything um and I'm not supposed to lift over 30 pounds. So it's like I have all these wonderful things going on with that. So I'm going to contact one of my old employers in Duluth tomorrow and work on my resume and see if they need nurses because I know they have a group home and they have all sorts of stuff um, up in Duluth. And including home visits that I used to do for them. So the company's still around and I should be able to get back into the door with them pretty easy. And they weren't a bad company to work for. It's just I got divorced and, you know, was in the middle of a divorce and had to come down to Minneapolis. So that was the only reason I quit. Sadie oh my week is up and down you know the usual stuff and thank you that's a friend's dog and she had given me some really expensive clothing from like Austria and Italy and stuff and she's been wanting a painting of her dog for quite a while from me so I'm like yeah I'll paint the dog don't have a problem with that Used way too much white there though, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Still add white on the brush. And all I'm doing is just layering in the black right now. The poodle is about nine years old, so she's getting very, very gray. She 
She's a little adorbs. And boy, I come over and we want to play like crazy. She's almost a little past. very cute little girl and her name is Lucy her nose is actually working out pretty good yay do have to layer that in a bit more though there gonna look a little flat for a while till I get all the colors in okay well you have a good night Sadie thank you for popping in sorry I had to take a drink here this base shading done and can go from there after I stream I gotta go work out might as well take the opportunity to get my body in better shape you know it's gonna be fun trying to get details in black fur during the day so I'm probably gonna try another Minecraft live stream tonight and see if YouTube actually records it this time so mad oh my gosh I was just furious I was almost to the point of throwing things which I haven't been that angry in quite a while but Given everything. still with the same home care company I have I have a case that's only one day a week unfortunately and they filled up on staff so they won't give me the full time there which I wanted in the first place was full time there but I had been with this other kid for five years so I didn't want to leave there either and that probably was the wrong decision but I just don't have a lot of faith that I'm going to be able to get 
my full-time shifts, my full-time hours in. This here is what you call the paint by number stage. <laughs> ends up looking like a paint by number. <laughs> it's really sad. Clearly not doing a paint by number, but it ends up looking like it. This is going to take a lot of layers and a lot of brush strokes. It's kind of easier, really, I think, than a short hair dog because, you know, I just have to deal with all the whirls and curls in her coat. You know, I'm wondering now if I have to relicense for Wisconsin. That's what I've been concerned about because we thought, you know, even maybe moving to Superior and then working in Duluth, I've known a lot of nurses that do that. But um, I just don't know if I have to relicense, which is one of the things I have to look at. Either way it would still be closer to both of my kids, and that's part of part of why we're kind of considering that option. And the cost of living is so much higher down here. And considering that it's going to be a whole year of the IRS taking my wages, um, we have to have a lower cost of living. Means I'm going to be going back on a nearly vegan diet for a while, I think, though. But we have, I'm, I'm one of those that I always prepare for hard times. So it's like when I do have money, I stock up on things like dry goods in the pantry. I have a bunch of meat in the freezer. Um, my one friend sold me a bunch of whole duck for the same cost of what you would get a whole chicken for in the store the cheap ones so it's like I have duck in the freezer I've got rabbit we've got all sorts of things you know and so um food wise you know I might have to run to the food shelf a couple of times just to fill up on greens and stuff like that but food wise we're doing okay at least for a little bit Things I did learn from my mother. <laughs> you get ready for when the crap is going to hit the fan. And, you know, all, what's so funny is you get these conspiracy people that are like, well, it, these preppers are like, oh, it's, you know, we're going to have an EMP. We're going to have all this. It's like, no, you just don't know if you're going to ever end up in the hospital or something else. That kind of SHTF happening, you know. That kind of stuff hitting the fan is very realistic for anybody, whether it's caused by a medical bill, whether, you know, anything can happen. So I've tried to get both of my kids to get the idea, too, to be prepared for things. And my daughter's a bit more of a prepper than my son is. But, you know, and she likes to do the outdoor stuff and... and uh, that kind of, you know, going that far on prepping and it's kind of a hobby of hers and she enjoys it. So why not? Whoops. Oh, well, that's a little early yet anyway. So, but 
as far as prepping for financial hardship, that's very much a reality. And, you know, I advise anybody to get ready for that sort of thing. You can get canned vegetables for like 45 cents a can in some places. I mean, there's all sorts of things. And I have a food dehydrator. I'm going to start using that a lot more. Uh, Aries. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> yeah, such a cute cat. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. That's just way too funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm just laying down the black coat, the black parts of the coat right now because she's about a nine-year-old dog, so she's turning gray. She can be a gray old girl. Just a toy poodle, and she's not the uh, bitey, yippy, evil kind either. She's really, really cute. Super friendly, and she totally loves to play. I've played with her a lot. <laughs> I've encountered some evil toy poodles over my years. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> but she's just absolutely adorable. <laughs> I'm going to be giggling about that for a little bit. Oh, yeah, I bet. Out where you're at. Oh, my gosh. You have to be. That's why I was so happy, too, because my son brought venison down. He got his first deer. And I made venison jerky. It didn't last very long. <laughs> It tasted really good. It was my first time. I did it in the dehydrator because I don't have a smoker. But, oh, it was so good. And it didn't last long for anybody. We all just tore into it. And he left me some steaks and some roast. And also pretty happy with that. venison just oh my gosh it just totally was like melt in my mouth you know as I hadn't had it for so many years it was just wonderful yeah, welcome to pretend to paint by numbers with Christina <laughs> This is almost looking like paint by numbers. Oh, you guys aren't even seeing where I'm going here. Fix it. Here we go. <laughs> now remember, Aries, when you need positive energy, there's Bob Ross, positive energy. Hi, Bob. <laughs> but thank you. I love that. Even though I don't paint like Bob, he still is like, you know, a hero to me. He was a good part of my childhood and high school. Just like the original Voltron cartoon. I always rooted for the bad guy, too. It was funny. Yeah, that last can of positive energy is not getting opened. So, I, But it's always here on the live stream. Maybe someday they'll notice me. Senpei, notice me. And uh, decide to send me a case of Bob Ross paints or something. That would be just 
funny as I'll get out. I would just freak. So I'm going to keep pushing it, you know. I'm going to do an Amber Lynn and, and uh, keep pushing the coldest water bottle and hopefully they'll they'll sponsor me. Try our product. Yes, yes, I will. Okay. I survived living in the bush for months at a time, came home to visit his aunt and got bit by her. Oh my God. Yeah, they can be really nasty. Luckily, this little girl isn't, but oh my gosh. Oh my God. Yikes. Yikes, that's bad. Yeah, some of them are just evil little buggers. You know, this lady used to run a home care agency that I worked for and um, her, she always had the dogs in the office. Everybody that worked in the office, they all brought their dogs. So this little gal here um, was used to um, other dogs and people coming in all the time and, and kids with severe medical needs coming in and everything else. So she's a good little girl. She's just a phenomenal little baby and very spoiled and very playful at nine. And she, she wants all the attention when I'm there. It's just cute. Very happy to do a dog with a with a nice personality like that. My husband's um, grandmother had um, Alaskan Esky that was raised by her by herself and that dog when I came in to do like dressing changes and stuff for her after she came out of the hospital I made the mistake of coming in with my scrubs on oh my god that dog actually bit through my pants I had you know some blood through my scrubs and I'm like well you know it is what it is and you know I didn't Luckily, that didn't get infected or anything. And eventually, over over time, after Grammy passed away, uh, uh, Yuki decided that I was okay. And um, she wasn't blaming me for smelling like the hospital anymore. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, for the longest time, that dog was having none of me being around. Oh my gosh. It was like constantly growling at me and that was not fun. <laughs> of course, she did not like that, you know, her mama was in the hospital, you know. She does have a little teensy bit of light brown in her coat. So what we're going to do is add that into the grays. Um, they're a little bit of brown and because dogs eyes usually are brown and um, then the black I used brown uh, brick red yeah heritage brick is the color it's kind of a brownish reddish something so I used that and white 
and black. I always start with the eyes first because I want that kind of look, you know, where it they look like they're looking at you. In this case, I blend right on the canvas. In part because I have a little too much brown and I have to blend it out. <laughs> But even though she's got a lot of gray, she still is a black dog. So I have to make sure not to change her color too much. You're going to see the colors shift around quite a bit while I get this going. That scraping is just my fingernail on the canvas. Oh, she is working out really nice, actually. And she's a little bit more shorter hair and blacker under the nose. but I do have to lighten it enough to make it stand out. That's the hard part doing black dogs. I was trying to get the details to just pop, you know? <laughs> My last dog that I did was a, um, uh, one of the neighbors, Pomeranians, he almost looks like a Sheltie. He's really adorable. And um, he's, oh my gosh, his name is Scooby and he's black and white. And he's got this really, really interesting coat pattern. And so I, I had to paint, draw him and I did him in ink. And she's got that hanging in her living room. He's, he's such a cute dog. And he yips and spins around and dances around me. Gets so excited when I'm there. It's like, oh my gosh, you cute little bugger. Do just a hint of brown right there. I 
I know it's starting to, it's starting to just really pop. I'm, I'm pleased with it. That's where she's got some gray is right under there, which makes it hard because, again, it's trying to get those details to just come out without looking like the wrong layer of furs on the top. having fun though she is cute she's a very very cute girl She hadn't had a recent haircut when I took these photos, so that's what I'm going with. <laughs> I was laying on the floor trying to photograph her while she's running back and forth. I was videotaping her. She was having a good time. It was just so funny. And my sister-in-law did the same thing with uh, Ixchel and uh, Balam, too. And we don't have that video yet from her but she was laying on the floor with this really, really expensive camera because she does photography. And she was having fun too because the kittens were just all over the place. And that's what this dog does. She just interacts with you so much. And that's always wonderful, you know, when they're, you have a very energetic, interactive dog. My wolf husky was like that. And yes, I did say that right. Wolf and husky, 50-50. I only have one good photo of her, so painting Puka would be really, really hard. It's not even a really good photo. It's so old. This is back from 2005 or 2004. That girl was stunning.
And unfortunately, because I moved to Minneapolis, I couldn't take her with me. So that broke my heart. And then she got gunned down in front of my kids. During said divorce. And, um, yeah, so that broke my heart because she was... She was my best friend. We'd lay on the grass together and she'd have her paws over me and licking me. And I mean, just. Yes, I did. <laughs> dog came from a non-dog. Yes. And she was amazing. Oh my God, that I'm looking on the iPad and that nose is actually working out. Yeah, it wasn't a good divorce, Aries. <laughs> yeah, Celeste, I'm just, there's going to be, the next live stream, there's going to be changes to the landscape, and, you know, I'll have to explain why and show some of the things that I found, because I had been traveling some more and stuff, and set up a bunch of nether portals, and just, you know, I, I did, started working on the retaining walls on my compound, and then, <laughs> Yeah, it was really, really messed up bad. But I don't deal with him anymore. My youngest is turning 21 this year, so I don't have to deal with him anymore. Oh, yeah, she is a little more gray on that side. She's got kind of this silver gray coat going on. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. You in your little silver gray coat? Just got a hair or something in the brush. I I love this. This is coming out really, really nice. Go back to see how her shadows are on that side. Oh, I have a kitten that's meow meowing at me. Yeah, and she's more gray up this way too. Let's start there. Yeah, I'm doing um, from uh, Target, the handmade modern paint. Uh, this one is driftwood, so I'm doing driftwood and white and black on her coat. And admittedly, this is one of the best craft paints I have ever used. Matter of fact, Celeste, you have some coming when I finally get to where I can send the package. <laughs> still want to get that sent and I still have to send Grampy his uh his drawing of the lobster too because he's getting the original I sent him a really good scan that he's using on the coffee mugs and and the merch which is great I want one of those mugs <laughs> but I want to send him the original too because the original looks really cool but that's like not for a little bit yet. <laughs> so that means Celeste, as I'm packing up my art room, um, I will be able to add some more interesting things to the box. So I've got some interesting things. Ah, <laughs> cute. I still use crocheted dishcloths from I had one patient I took care of back in I think he passed away in 2002 it was not that long after September 11th really and his mother was he, he died at 50 his mother whoops survived him but she used to make and sell these washcloths and I'd do craft shows up in Duluth and uh, have her stuff at my table. But 
Uh, she also uh, gave me a bunch of them too, so I still use them. They have hung in all this time. And I even I had one patient that didn't have a lot of cleaning supplies and stuff and we're trying to, you know, keep things clean there. So I brought a bunch of those washcloths there too, because I had, she just, what didn't sell, she let me keep. So I had like a huge box of them. And so they're going to good use. Oh, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. She's coming out cute. I don't want to do too much real black around the eye there, but there's got to be some. Yeah, the same lady tried to teach me to crochet and I just could not. I mean, I used to knit when I was a kid, but she tried tried to teach me crocheting and the pain just went up into my shoulder and there was just no way I was doing it. And when I worked at a nursing home, um, near Minneapolis, we had one lady that crocheted a lot of uh, really intricate fancy Barbie doll clothes for me. And I had a, I, I still have some of the Barbies that I played with when I was little, including the one Italian one that they used the mold only once. So I still have some of these re really fancy uh, crocheted doll clothes that this lady made for my dolls to model. And um, they're just gorgeous. I still have them. And then uh, one gal in the Ukraine uh, knits and crochets. And so my Ella and Wild dolls, I have a few outfits of hers. Yeah, I usually, it depends. I don't know what my living situation is going to be. Um, I'm hoping I'm still going to be able to do Pagan Pride, which is our big, um, our great big uh, sale that we do every year in Minneapolis. <laughs> Hubby does the uh, knitting looms because it's easier with the MS. He only has to use one hand. And that works out a lot easier for him doing the looms. And he can do some pretty incredible stuff we have a he's working on another scarf um, we have one scarf on Etsy right now that is just gorgeous and it's like I've been so close tempted to keep it myself <laughs> several times it's just that pretty you know find these stunning yarns and stuff and what he doesn't use, I have to do more weaving and stuff. What yarns he doesn't use, um, you know, I can just take and use for weaving too. And same thing with scraps, because I don't do straight, I don't do regular weaving in patterns. I just do random stuff because, you know, it's kind of fun. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, this lady that did the washcloths for me had one at county fairs several times, too. She was really, really good. Or she's not around anymore. She was 85 when her son passed away, so that was a long time ago for that. I wanted to throw a little bit more brown in there. getting hard now because I have to figure out where to place my hand. <laughs> I 
I'm unfortunately making the camera shift and I apologize. I don't know how to stop it. It's just what this iPad does. Hi, Doxaeus. How are you? The coolest one, I know one lady who used to pay for her, um, for her care at the nursing home and everything with her embroidery. And she was 104 and, you know, had done precise embroidery all her life. Well, the arthritis was so bad they had to bust all of her knuckles. And so she'd hold, she'd hold the needle like this and then work this way. And she still had such impressive skill. It was gorgeous. And she sold her pieces for a lot of money. Oh my God. Smiley face. I know we have one, one uh, canal here, well, kind of a little stream type area that just walking through it, my, my daughter and I just felt really weirded out. And this is broad daylight in the summer. And it, it is a kind of a canal because they got the stone sides going down on it and everything, you know, worked, worked bricks and, and stuff. And we're walking by it and I felt like something grabbed me by the throat and was trying to pull me into the water and the water was black. And we're trying to walk by so my daughter grabbed me and was, you know, trying to pull me away from it. Yeah, I, mean, I just told a Helton type story. Um, but oh my God, her and uh, Laura and I were absolutely terrified of walking past this place. And it's on the way to the Mississippi River Trail from where I live. And it's just creepy as heck. And I imagine, you know, there's drug dealers out there. There's homeless people. Or, you know, we're walking by and people are drinking out of bottles wrapped in paper bags and everything. So I imagine a few people probably died there, you know. But, oh, no, scary as heck. I don't even, what I do is with my pencil drawings, um, the ones that I do full color with, let me see, let me grab one really quick. Okay, let me switch over here really quick. Switch the camera back around. All right. Um, generally what I've done, now this is my Etsy pricing and I take care of shipping. Um, so something, oh yeah, we pretty much have a whole behind it out. Now this is mixed media. So I have ink, colored pencil, watercolor, and acrylic. And this size, this is nine by 12, I sell for 45 on Etsy and I take care of shipping. Seems to be a reasonable price and that's me doing a commission, anybody's uh, gaming character, 
for sauna, anything like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. You sold that. $20 is way too low, especially when you're paying shipping. Holy cow. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. If I do something like this, which is just ink, um, this drawing, the original here, would be about $30. Um, this side, now this one is not finished. Uh, this is five by seven, um, but this is all just colored pencil. And I would do this one for about 25. So that's a five by seven. And again, just, you know, people's computer game characters, um, just whatever, you know. And this one also was acrylic ink and watercolor on that one. This one's my own character. <laughs> I was just having fun with her. Kind of a sassy video game character. But that's like with doing fursanas and stuff like that. Um, this painting here, uh, this canvas is about a 9 by 12 as well. Um, that painting I would be doing, I'll be selling well, not to this lady, because, I mean, the cloak she gave me from Austria by itself is expensive, as I'll get out. Um, but um, I normally would sell a 9 by 12 canvas for about $65. So, um, the large Dragon of Marduk that uh, Digital Hammurabi got, uh, that canvas would be about $500. Um, just because it was huge. It was 24 by 36 um, to just make the print, and that wasn't the scanning, but to actually print it out on the archival cotton um, was $90 costing me. So um, a print like that would probably sell about 200 after, you know, with me paying shipping, things like that. Um, so those are the, that's how I do my pricing, at least on, on, uh, paintings and canvas work and stuff like that. Uh, a straight pencil drawing, I can usually whip those out pretty fast. Um, but I'll still try to do really, really decent work on them. So a straight pencil drawing, kind of like this one like that one there, guess who? Um, that would be about 20 bucks. So I work pretty quickly. Um, and that one I'm gonna do a lot more cleanup yet before I give it to Shani's mom, so. So that's, that's how I do my pricing. Uh, so, yeah. That's, that's actually what that uh, dragon horse drawing is for. I have a bunch of them that I'm working on. Um, my sister-in-law's got a good scanner, and she's going to be uh, scanning this one in yet and then cleaning it up in Photoshop for me so that I can make a coloring book page out of it. That is the intention for this. And I have a few that are already done. I have an owl that is it's put away right now, but it's really spectacular. Um, took me a long time to ink it. And that's why the inked one like that would be a lot more expensive than just the pencil drawing is because those can take me some, a good amount of hours. Um, probably more expensive for an extremely detailed one like that. But I want to do those as coloring pages because they're just cool. Um, I have the deer skull hanging up here. Uh, that I had painted on, and that one I was trying to sell for 125 and it's got a good-sized uh, set of antlers on it attached. Um, I have a weaving. I'm not going to go behind the desk and take them down right now, but I have a weaving up there with a painted uh, coyote skull on it, and that 
is woven onto a birch branch and has grouse feathers on it. And that one I think I was selling for $125. It's got a painted coyote jawbone on it too. So, you know, it depends on what I'm doing. But yeah, this one here would go for $65. And for 9 by 12 Yeah, I, well, because I'm dealing with Etsy, um, it's like the same thing with my craft sale booth too, is I go and I just upcharge just a little bit to handle sales tax. And um, on Etsy, I, I upcharge um, reasonably. I'm still, our pricing is still lower than other people, surprisingly. But I handle the shipping and handling, um, except for like the t-shirt designs that are going through Etsy now and stuff that, and the tapestry of the dragon of Marduk, um, the ship that's from a, uh, printing company and they just ship out to you. But, um, otherwise if it's going overseas, I charge half. So they still get a discounted rate on the shipping, even though they're not in the United States. But I had one guy that turned around and went through my entire shop. And I had some cheaper uh, hand beaded necklaces. I had worked in seed beads and did these really cute necklaces for kids. And he went through the whole shop, found the ones that I hadn't figured out the shipping policies yet. So I hadn't fully adjusted them. And so he went and ordered all of them, which would have been a good thing. Uh, it was like 20, 25 bucks in sales, which was okay. You know, just for seed bead necklaces. All right, no problem. He was in Germany. The shipping ended up being about $32. Jackass, pardon my language, went through my entire shop and picked out every single thing where I had said I was going to pay shipping, combined all the shipping together, and it it ended up not only costing me the supplies, but I ended up paying him for taking my product. I was furious. So I, it, if they get a discount on the shipping, it is for overseas it is discounted but it's not free i will not do it free i've had stuff go to norway i've had stuff go to um i think australia was one i sent to um i've had uh uh slave collars go to uh japan to tokyo exactly and you know things like that so i'm very careful now on what i do and yes, I did say that. I uh, do uh, braided soft leather collars. I also do um, them in uh, uh, neoprene and then mix with vintage laces and, and um, antique uh, uh, cameos and stuff like that. If it's a modern cameo, I charge less for it, but everything's edged, glass beads, got the, got the rings in the front and the a, able to lock them in the back and it's taken me a while to develop the designs but yeah I'm a naughty girl oh nice I don't do pet paintings very much but <laughs> this is working <laughs> this is working out nice I'm very happy with this little girl And it is, I wasn't sure I was going to stream tonight because I've just been having a bad time. And it's like, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm accomplishing something and I'm in a much better mood now. <laughs> so thank you guys. You've helped. <laughs> and being able to get this little girl done is going to be nice too go out and see my friend and 
the home care company she ran, we were all family in that company. And so we've stayed friends over the years because she's just a wonderful, wonderful person. And a nurse too. And she she's one of those that does bend over backwards for people and unfortunately, like me, gets hurt, you know. But... I wouldn't trade her for anything. There's going to be a little drop of white coming in here. Just ignore that. And she's given us so much stuff, plants for my garden, edible plants and things like that. That if we end up going to Duluth, I'm not going to be able to see her much anymore. And this is going to be hard. But all I do is work anyway, so I don't see very many people anyhow. <laughs> I see co-workers. <laughs> I'm willing to do it. I am more than willing to do it. I think that would be fun. I still want to do a painting of Oscar's six toes too, because he was just. I'm I'm still thinking of doing a comic series though with with the cats, and so I might turn him into that and just really, ex not that I have to exaggerate his feet a lot; they were awfully huge. Um, so yeah, I still want to paint him, and then my husband's old cat Panther too was. He was an American Bombay, and he was so unique. And I want to do him, um, the canvas still in my head. Um, I wanted to paint him uh, being carried away by bast. So you've got all the braiding in the hair coming down the back and a tattoo of an Egyptian cat on her shoulder and him facing you like he's being carried over her shoulder, you know, facing the viewer of the canvas. So you see her hair and her headdress and everything and him looking at you with his paws draped down. Yeah, I I really want to do that painting still. It's been in my head. He passed away a long time ago, but it's like it's just been that canvas has been sitting there just waiting for me to have the skill to do it. I think I'm at that point. Be careful not to screw this one up. <laughs> She's starting to not look like a paint by number anymore. <laughs> Little Miss Lucy. She's so cute. Just got to be careful not to have it look flat. I still want the illusion of the hair. There we go. That's better. She's got a lot of gray on this side.
Yeah, I'm just glad I managed to get Shani the right way, too. That's what Betty was saying, that I, I captured what was inside of Shani a bit more. I'm still not super satisfied with it, but I'm going to just tweak the, the drawing a, lot, a little bit more yet. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm so used to doing more fantasy-type portraits that... Um, realism is not a thing I'm used to doing with people, but I really wanted to get her eyes though. I mean, when she has her makeup on and everything, she looks amazing and I wanted to get that looking just right. So these eyes look amazing. So does the nose. I love it. I love it. I think I'm at the stage right at the moment. Whoops. I bumped my mouse. Wondering if I start working on her amber necklace in the collar. Because I'm going to have to lay her hair over top of it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, let's go that route. Oh, I'm sorry, Celeste. And your presence so late, it's not even funny. Yeah, the necklace is actually little amber chips. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> it's been so bad. It's just when I was getting ready to, to send it, and it's when my wages started getting garnished. Yeah. Well, it is kind of, but it's like things have snowballed so bad over the years that I just couldn't keep up with the taxes anymore. And it came to bite me in the bum. Really bite me in the bum. Okay, that should be, let's carry a little bit, teeny, teeny bit. No, I'm not going to do active red except on her tag. So we'll go with the Georgia clay color. <sighs> Maybe if I shake it up first. Yeah, garnished. <laughs> A little bit of Georgia clay. I got white, so I'm doing yellow Georgia clay and... Um, what was the other color? Um, I'm doing Americana uh, Terracotta is the other color. Yeah, I buy things on clearance. <laughs> I get a lot of these paints from the thrift store, believe it or not. And hey, it works. Oh, no. Oh, for Pete's sake. So he hijacked your birthday. It's supposed to be your day and here comes a guy who makes it all about him. Those are such lovely people. Oh, jeez. Wonderful. Good. 
gotta love people like that, you know? Where's the terracotta? Ow, my brooker. Oh my gosh, I've had my tailbone broken. That's not fun. Holy crap, Mudbrooker. That's not how you do a birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, no. What a mooch. Absolute mooch. Trying to do the little amber chips here. Smudbroker. Yeah. Oh my God. That's horrible. Oh, jeez. That is a crappy birthday. I am so sorry. Oh, my God. Sorry, I left you a happy birthday message, but that was about it. That sucks. that layer dry before I come back down here. So, Mudbroker, you're going to be 51 this year? Oh, yeah, I remembered it. Got to remember friends' birthdays. Hopefully I can say that. I, I don't want to overstep bounds. <laughs> Go and suddenly declare somebody as a friend and then they're like, no, no, no. 
<laughs> well, early happy birthday, Mudbrooker, in case I forget. Uh, well, thank you, Celeste. I feel the same way. I think Mudbrooker is heading on that page as well. Paranor for sure. Grampy for sure. Oh, I, I, I feel I'm lucky that I remember my one friend from high school's birthday and my husband's because... Um, my friend's is March 27th and my husband's is March 29th. And then my daughter's birthday is April 26th and my son's is June 25th. So... <laughs> I keep flip-flopping the numbers around all the time, and I screw up on people's birthdays. It's pretty bad. I, I'd love to be able to call you a friend, Mudbroker. Actually, I have been for quite a while. All right, now I got to work on that collar. Because I need to be able to get that. Ah, that collar. Okay, so it is kind of the brick background. Her collar's a little weird. This is going to take some layering of colors here. Yeah, except her um, her tag is silvery and it's really worn, and I kind of want to capture that because it's it's the texture and the wearing on the metal is really interesting. That's the rings. The name tag I think I'm going to do last because that's not going to have any hair laying over top of it. So I want to get everything behind it done first. But the collar for sure. I need to get that done before I get any more of the hair done. Are you getting murdered out there? Oh, it's so cute. Our little floofies. Adorable mr. Oh, God, Chill farted again, you guys. Stinky cat. She let one go yesterday. That was like one of the worst farts that you could ever imagine. I don't know why this cat farts so bad. But it wafted into three rooms. It was horrible. Yeah, we just... Go by Tez Catlapoca. <laughs> but yeah, Chell let out this. She jumped up behind Hubby on uh, the sideboard. We have a built-in sideboard in the dining room. She jumped up on it and was behind him and all affectionate and everything. 
And then she let this fart go, and it was a nightmare. <coughs> Uh, it was so hideous. <laughs> there he is. There's hubby. Although I have accidentally used his real name a number of times, so. That's just after the whole Rev and Shanny thing. I try not to. <laughs> Since they tried to drag his name for, through the mud for no reason. Do they need reasons? <laughs> Desi! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to call him Tessie. I don't think he's going to appreciate me doing that. <laughs> Love you. That's a weird hound's tooth type pattern on this thing. <laughs> Tessie. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Now we go into the tinier brush. Not exactly accurate, but her collar's old and worn out. So we're gonna use that as an excuse. Oh, gee, farting cat is running around going barreo, barreo again. Farting cat. I'm not worrying about that right there. Okay, now what is that one? Okay, hubby, what did you share? Let's see. <laughs> Ikea tail. Yeah, the directions on Ikea Kitten were very confusing. And yes, that's Farting Cat. Oh, this collar.
we go. That's better. I love how iTunes added this weird piece back in after I took it out like several times on the last live stream. How many times do I have to remove it from the playlist? Ugh. was on my Minecraft playlist originally because I was live streaming from this computer. Which I don't mind slightly creepy ambient sounds on my Minecraft playlist, but on my painting playlist, not really. <laughs> Oh, really? I hope they did the first one justice with it. I'm going to have to check that out. We were going to cancel Netflix, but we, we managed to be able to keep it, so... Because we don't have cable TV, we just have the cable internet, you know. Yeah, I have um, Amazon Prime by accident because they billed me without and signed me up for it without asking me. But then I looked at, you know, the shows that I watch and everything and stuff I was interested in. And it's like, hey, 144 for a year or, you know, over a hundred a month just for TV, I think I will get rid of the TV. <laughs> photos of that. All right. Sorry, I'm moving the phone cord here. The tablet's plugged in so we can do the stream. That would be really cool. Yeah, so the the rings and that I will do after I get the rest of the dog done. But at least I have 
most of the uh, color work done and I can go back to doing the rest. Yeah, one of my future projects I want to do. Um, use art resin. It's really good. That's what I'm going to do with the uh, box that I'm going to make. This got uh, five glass sides on the box. And... Um, it, uh, it, um, I'm going to paint on the glass and then do the layers of resin with paint in between and do the box like ocean and art. I'm going to use art resin to do the pores on all the la different layers. And, um, the hard part is going to be too, is I have to flip the box on its various sides and just work on one side at a time. And I want the whole thing to look like an ocean bottom and have, you know, like fish swimming and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be an interesting project. <laughs> but I'm going to definitely, I've had such good luck with art resin that uh, it's what I'm going to stick with. I love it. It works so nice. And I'm even, I have to do another coat on this rock to cover the painting, but I coated this rock with art resin first. The only thing you'll find if you paint over top of resin is it makes it feel like the glass paints so the paint doesn't blend as neatly but then I'm going to take that rock and coat it with resin again and that'll seal the painting right in it yeah yeah this I might do that in one of the layers of Sculpey a little whoops Sculpey um some smaller fish in there, but I mainly want to do it all with paint like I did that sea turtle. Because that effect was just so, it came out so nice. Oh, I need a little more white and a little more of the uh, driftwood color. Oh. Oh, neat. I have uh, some commercial weights for the wide mouth jars. The only problem I had last time I made sauerkraut is it ended up, um, oops, that's too much of that brown, um, ended up really slimy after uh, a few days. And I just, I have to re rework how I do the sauerkraut. But I've had really, really good luck with uh, making my own kimchi. And I'm, I've been able to use the weights for that. But I'd found them for sale on Amazon and I'm like, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, of making the weight itself, Mudbrooker, you should do a video of it. And what one is this one? Okay, well, I'll keep that one in. 
Kevin McLeod does some interesting ones. <laughs> I still got to do a sourdough starter yet, yet too. I want to make myself a bread with um, sourdough, but use um, um, the flour I mix in with it to actually make the bread. I want to use chickpea flour in there. So I have a little bit higher protein and more fiber in the bread. But the starter itself, I want to do with, you know, regular flour for, you know, regular baking flour or whatever so oh gee meow 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 she doing a lot of meowing little bugger She's so cute. The kittens are adorable. Now what's Hunter's bread? My hubby's not a fan of sourdough, but I like sourdough, so... I just make some small loaves for myself. It'll be a little healthier, you know. Oh, that would be nice. Thank you, Mudbrooker, because it's getting it started that I'm a little apprehensive about. I went, when I was brewing kombucha, I went and um, had bought a plain kombucha from the store, kept it refrigerated until I was ready to use it, and then set it out to warm it up, you know, to get it to start the fermenting process. Um, because when it's refrigerated, it doesn't, it won't ferment. So, um, I got that going and got a good mother out of it. And then, oh my gosh, I was making kombucha like mad. I had a lot of good luck with that. Matter of fact, I had so much I couldn't drink it all so I just stopped making it I'm like yeah I'm done with that probably good for my gut but you know I'm I'm so done with it and one thing they don't tell you is when you're brewing kombucha at home is that when they go through the store they only brew it so long so it doesn't get the alcohol content in it that the home brew kombucha will get And it's like, okay, I normally do not drink. I am a child of an alcoholic. And I don't want to go the route my father did. So it's like, uh, nope, nope, I'm done. Done with it. Especially when I had four half gallon jars of it. I'm like, what am I going to do with all this? I eventually drank it, but oh my God. <laughs> 
That and there's a lot of sugar in there, which is not the best for a diabetic either. <laughs> Sorry, bump the. Am I actually going to do this whole thing on one live stream? Oh my gosh, it's looking like it. Wouldn't that be fun to get this whole thing done? It's like, no, I'm, I'm so done with doing the kombucha stuff. I'll once in a while buy one. But I think a lot of it is one of those myths again. Oh, it's good for your gut. It's good for your gut. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of vegans and stuff drink it. And they don't put two and two together that that is going to mess up your blood sugar. Because straight kombucha without fruit or without being brewed with fruit or juice in it is just nasty. To do it right, you have to do a first ferment with just the sugar and the tea in it. And then the second ferment you do with um, some juice in there or fruit. And, um, I mean, I've made some really good tasting kombucha, but, oh my gosh. It, um, is the second ferment supposed to be 30 days, and it does get some alcohol in it. Yeah, yeah. That definitely will help. Bump everything again. I 
think this one is actually going to be worth putting on Instagram. <laughs> Probably Pinterest, too. This is actually turning out. Had my doubts. Oh my god, you want me to do a dog? I haven't done a dog except the one. I've done lots of horses. I actually want to paint my in-laws dog. He's an English Springer and oh my gosh, his colors are so, so unbearably pretty. Oh, good. Oh, cool. Yeah, I still have to see the last couple um, How to Train Your Dragon movies, too. I love How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> Pardon me, had an almost burp on camera here. No, I haven't. I didn't like the first one. The story is just so creepy. You think about those girls pretty much being imprisoned in that castle. And if you start looking at the psychology and the, you know, the psychiatric issues behind it, the whole thing, it just, it's weirded out so bad for me. I just couldn't. Uh, yeah, the the first one was so bad. I just, I mean, the music was nice and the animation was nice, but I couldn't get past what was going on with those girls. And I mean, you know, I've had enough psychiatric background um, for my nursing program. Um, I took extra courses in abnormal psych, uh, criminal psychology, and um, then I ended up my first nursing job. Uh, I was working at the state psychiatric hospital on the borderline personality disorder unit. They had their own unit and it was a locked unit. So patients had to stay. And right next to it was, and this made no sense. You have victims of abuse in a unit locked that, the next set of doors, because there were, you know, two heavy steel doors between areas, the next unit over was the antisocial personality disorder, a narcissistic personality disorder unit. Uh, that was squidgy, to say the least. And then the old hospital, of course, is haunted besides. So that just made it infinitely worse. Anoka Metro Regional Treatment Center is a known haunting place. It's, it's pretty bad. The original hospital was like in the 1800s. There was electroshock therapy. Um, it was originally used for treating TB patients. Uh, the cemetery on the grounds I actually found. And um, that 
the first stone was laying there was just marked with a number one. Just this little stone buried in the grass. And they didn't even um, mow this. And I went looking, and they had the area fenced in, but I went into it and looked, and I was just shaking like a leaf trying to even go into this fenced-in area. And I found it. And it's like, ugh. And so frozen to me, just with that knowledge that I've got in the back of my head, No, 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 no. But really, one of my favorite movies is Tangled, and you look at Mother, and she is scary as heck. You know, and not just because of the performance of uh, Miss Deanna Troy there from Star Trek, but Mother is frightening. And a lot of those old stories that Disney has taken from... There was a lot of abuse and horror involved in those those tales. And you know, like like the hunchback of Notre Dame, that was just absolutely horrifying. Wonderful movie. But even though Disney tried to tone it down, it still was horrifying, <laughs> you know? And they did try to tone it down. Yeah, yeah. But like The Little Mermaid, she was a Swedish fairy tale, I think. And she killed herself. You know, or Swedish, no, Swiss, Swiss fairy tale, I think. I don't remember. One of the two. Don't quote me. But, you know, it, some of those stories, and they're wonderful stories. I mean, they're part of human history. These, these tales need to be retold and stuff, but a lot of even the younger parents with their kids now and stuff don't know the origins of these tales. Yeah. Yeah, I think the little mermaid was um was Sweden. Oh jeez. Oh yeah, same thing with the Noka Metro or is, is some abandoned areas in there. The architecture of the buildings is so lovely. I mean, I was just enamored with the architecture. But, like, I worked night shift there. And um, we'd go and we would trade off because there'd be two nurses on duty on my unit. And then we'd have PCAs on duty. And um, so two nurses and two PCAs at night. And then, of course, the hospital uh, supervisor at night, too, you know, another RN. But um, we had this break room in the back with a couch back there for the staff because our shifts were 12-hour shifts, and that gets really long at night. So we were allowed to combine all our breaks and um, just take... Uh, one long hour break with the other nurse on duty and just sleep, you know. And we'd still have our little pager and everything, but we got to take a nap back there and give ourselves some time. Some of the things, like, you know how you're just starting to go under sleeping? You know, you haven't quite hit that sleep state yet, but you're going under some of the weird, scary beings that I encountered in that state, I got to the point where I was not 
going to sleep in that hospital ever again. It was so bad. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Yeah, Ed Gein would be... Eesh. Oh, my God. Yeah, Anoka Metro is... It's an interesting place. I'd love to write some horror stories about it, but I'm not that good of a writer, and I don't know how I would approach a plot or anything like that. Um, to try and make something believable that involves that hospital and not get sued. I mean, I, I would clearly have to do something involving time travel and going to the past in that place, I think. Yeah, my husband writes too. He's really good. We write together quite a bit on some things. But right now I'm working on the children's books first, which I'm happier with. <laughs> but I just can never get it out of my head, that very first tombstone that only has the number one on it. There's a story behind that one. This unknown person. I want to... It would have to be horror, you know. And my mother-in-law went there as a kid with her school class for some reason. Why that's a field trip to the psychiatric hospital, I don't know. But they were going down this one hall and there's these ladies reaching through the bars trying to grab the children. And my mother-in-law remembers that really clearly. And I want to incorporate that because I've been in the tunnels underneath the hospital, um, seen some scary things down there, seen some scary things on the unit I worked on, um, even in the lockdown rooms where we had to strap people to the beds and stuff. Um, yeah. I really, I, there's something there and it's in the back of my head and someday I'm probably going to get it on paper. I know the start of the story. I know where it's coming from. But beyond that, I don't know because the character hasn't really spoken to me yet. Oh, it's Danish. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, The Little Mermaid is Danish and it still was horrifying do I have any more yeah I do oh my gosh this is gonna get done you guys oh holy cow oh holy cow we're getting there I'm going to be reaching the point of doing her uh, tag. Ah! Oh, holy cow. I didn't think I was going to get this done in one evening. But I'm kind of like on a roll. I feel much more at peace right now. After my week. And... I think it's showing. Oh, I already have it written down. I have a few story ideas from dreams and from weird visions and stuff that I have stuff that's written down and it's just ready to get coined, you know. Um, but I'm I am working on my uh, cottage garden series first, which is um, from uh, baby level reading um, up to young adult 
and it involves my trolls and my dragons and stuff. So that's the one I'm working on first because I have to illustrate and I still have to, you know, do, I, I have to figure out how I'm going to illustrate too. I'd love to be able to do the figures in wool and then have my sister-in-law photograph everything um, against different painted backgrounds like some of the old Victorian storybooks used to be. But that's a lot of work. And it's like, so do I make my wool trolls posable art dolls? Do I just do different needle felted figures that I can substitute into the photographs as as needed in different poses, which I think might end up being a little harder because then I have to make sure that my sculpting is accurate from one, <laughs> one figure to the next. So I'm not really sure yet. But the story started getting created around the wool dolls that I make. And I've actually worked out the, um, the uh, biology, um, everything else. So the whole world being created is in my old, uh, and my fantasy of being the old witch that takes care of this old uh, English cottage house and there's a garden in the back. So the whole world is that little garden. And there's certain magic items and things like that. So that's that's my first one. And I want I started with some of the children's stories because a lot of parents, you know, they'll go and buy board books and expect nurses to sit there and read these board books to their kids. Well, you can only do so much reading of one word per page before you lose your mind. And I'm like, no, just no done. I, I'm done with this. So I've got an ABC book that a story that I wrote about some kittens in a barn during a storm. I've got one about a dragonfly trying to find a place to sleep um, when a storm is moving over a Minnesota pond. Um, you know, just different things like that. And that's That's where I want to go with it. I to just get those done first because board books are a nightmare. <laughs> no, I have her face angled so that one eye should be a little smaller than the other because her face is angled away. Okay, that looks right. I don't don't fix what isn't broke. Moving the tablet. Yeah, and those stories are written down and already have the time and date stamps and everything. So, um, you know, I'm not worried about saying the real, real basic on the world itself. I'm not giving away story details, of course, but... It's just and now for me with these stories, it's just illustrating. And who knows? Maybe if I have to move and stay with friends for a little bit while things change around, um, that might be the time to start the illustrating. Who knows? I might just have to take this all as opportunity. I'm trying to keep myself positive. <laughs> well, if I'm going to keep myself positive, <laughs> let's clear the negativity. Hi, Bob! <laughs>
Do, do you hear that, Bob Ross Foundation? I need, send me, notice me. I need a, uh, I definitely need a sponsorship. You want to sponsor a YouTube artist, right? A small channel? <laughs> Yeah, these pre-stretched canvases, I always paint the sides, too. Oh, ouch. Yeah, that he had the idea stolen from him. Yikes. And of course, no way of really proving it because he didn't copyright or at least mail paperwork back to himself with the time date stamp from the post office on it. That's a poor man's copyright, by the way. Still works. You got it sealed in an envelope that's got the time date stamped from the post office on it. Still works. All right, guys. We're going to hit the tag. Yay! We're my gird. We're my gird. Look how I can't believe. Wow. I can't believe I've gotten this far. <laughs> I'm not a girl, but I am female. Oh, ouch. Oh, that's painful. Yeah, I used to um, talk to, uh, used to have a friend, uh, Malachi Martin, was on the Art Bell show and stuff, and I still have letters from him and stuff, and he'd call and we'd talk about stuff like that because he, you know, had a lot, I think he had like 16 or 17 novels published before he died, and a lot of New York Times bestsellers, and they were all about the Catholic Church and stuff, but... Um, yeah, he, he gave me some tips and tricks too. Tag is really, really war. So we're going to make it look that way. Poor abused old name tag. <laughs> trying to angle what I'm doing here. Okay. Oh 
my gosh. Mudbrooker, <laughs> you rock. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, red will work. I'm going to go a little red and white and a little gray in there because things are worn out. Yeah, I had, um, when Hubby and I played Neverwinter Nights, um, the original one, uh, back in the day, you could host your own servers, and um, they had a, uh, a service where they could connect the servers together and stuff. And um, so we played on Persistent Worlds, which were ones that were... Um, permanently up and had an actual story around them and stuff. And um, so Hubby and I started teaming up together, writing and creating a culture around the half orcs and stuff and came up with a pretty believable culture. And a lot of people wanted to play as orcs on the server. The DMs got really, and the server owners got pissed at us because we you know, we really went to town with this. And um, so what happened is somebody else started up another world and they came up with a website and everything else and then shared on forums for Neverwinter Nights that they all of a sudden had this entire culture worked out. Um, and actually took our writings right off of our website and put it on theirs and claimed that they had created everything. And a lot of people from the community got together, you know, and they're like, uh, no, the stuff is dated right here on, you know, on Dragon Coast, which is what I've named my Minecraft world as. But, um, yeah, people were just furious because these idiots, and they were going to try to, they were claiming, oh, I'm just going to take you to court and sue you for it. And it's like, yeah, except everything is dated and up on these forums. And I still have copies of the writing that actually have the dates, time date stamps from those forums way back. And so it, um, yeah, it was a big mess. Could not believe the nastiness of people, you know. creative property rights that's like just really people really get just vile over that sort of thing okay I'm going to have to set this sideways for a moment don't want that wet paint. So now I have to switch back to doing the gray. A little bit more white. I can actually put the screensaver back on my phone because I am done with the photo. Crap. I can't believe I'm done with the photo. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I got this far tonight. Oh, wow. I'm going to add a little bit more. Look 
get this done first. <laughs> 161 minutes on the live stream so far. Oh, <laughs> jeez. I'd say this one is pretty productive live stream. I got to be careful right there. I'm going to have to sign this off camera because it, a lot of this paint is still wet. And I don't want to set it down the right way. here and there. All right. Well, if I hold it up, I should be able to sign it, but I got to get some more black paint here. <laughs> oh, okay. I love her nose. Her nose is really jumping out on camera, like, just fantastic. Here's my really, really abused brush. this here. Oh. Oh yeah, I I agree there. I might decide to have something before I go to bed tonight. <laughs> I don't know yet. Dock dropping myself. Uh, today's the twenty seventh, okay. Bump the 
tablet again. Um, Oh yeah, deep cleaning. Um, I don't think so tonight. We've been going for 166 minutes, actually. <laughs> I can't believe I got a whole painting done. Holy cow. Yeah, I gotta make myself some supper and... Ugh, I don't know if I'll do a Minecraft live stream tonight yet or go back to bed or what I'm gonna do. I'll figure it out. <laughs> But um, I don't think I'm going to start another project tonight. She came out really cute. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I'm going to have to get some good photos. Uh, probably, I think I'll take a picture of it during the daylight tomorrow and then uh, post it on Facebook. Let's see if she wants me to come and bring this over. I, oh, that came out just fantastic. I'm... I'm so thrilled. Let me show you guys the original again. Oh, my phone battery's just about shot. <laughs> I had the screensaver off for quite a while, though, and the photo, the camera loaded, so... So there's little Lucy. Hard to see. I'm trying to prevent that paint from getting wet. But yeah, there she is. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm really, really thrilled. Holy cow. This is awesome. Sorry, trying to take a photo. Need to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Zoomed in too far. Come on. There we go. All right cool beans and then I just accidentally took a photo of my desk as I set the phone down yay <laughs> oh my gosh fluffy dogs <laughs> fluffy doggies are hard <laughs> anyway I think I am gonna call it because I do need to go make myself some food so and I have to pee <laughs> so anyway you guys have a great day Thank you for popping in and keeping me company and helping make me feel better. Um, this, this worked tonight, so it's like, yay. I'll talk to y'all later. Blessed be, everyone.